into this house. We have come into this house to gather in his name and worship him. We have come into this house to gather in his name and worship him. Forget about yourselves. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourselves, concentrate on Him and worship Him. So church and happy Sabbath. You know, one thing I learned from listening to Pastor Snell last night as he spoke wonderfully was that we should challenge ourselves. He didn't say this directly, but this is what I got from him. We should try to look at everything, everyday happenings that go on in life and try to give it a spiritual meaning or a spiritual thought to it. So I thought to myself, I'm going to try to do that today. So I bring the call to worship. Um, my wife last night, she told me she wanted me to wear a red tie. And, you know, I kind of had my mind set on baby blue, Pastor, but she said, why don't you go with something red? And I was like, well, you know, my wife is real good to me, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go red with it. But then I thought a little deeper about it, Pastor, and I said, you know, red, though, it kind of gives a presidential feel, you know, and I don't have any desire to be president at all, lead that to President Obama. And then I thought, you know, it also has a congressional kind of feel to it. And then I said, well, you know, we are kind of in the House of Representatives when you think about it. We're in God's House of Representatives, amen, because we are representing Jesus Christ, amen. So I guess as I do the call to worship this morning, that kind of makes me the Speaker of the House, all right? <laughs> so that makes the red even all, more, all, the, all the more appropriate. So praise God. And with that said, let's call the church to worship. So now, my friends, the blood of Jesus makes us free to enter boldly into the sanctuary by the new living way which he has opened for us. We have moreover a great priest set over the household of God. So let us make our approach in sincerity of heart and full assurance of faith. Father God, we thank you so much for blessing us to be in your house today, Lord. You've been so good to us, Lord, better than we could have ever been to ourselves. Lord, we pray that you'll bless us now as we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is so great to be in the house of God today. How many of us, we're ecstatic to be in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Even if you're listening online, Yes, you are in the presence because we know that God is everywhere. We are serving an omnipresent God. He is not limited in any way. And so this is why we know that we have a mighty God. Amen. 
Now there's a gentleman that has been coming to church that I have, I've seen him since I came here. He has been coming faithfully. And uh, today when I came in, a little bird flew in the church and says, my daddy's birthday is today, right? And um, I understand that this man, he is celebrating uh, a double digit birthday, 88 years old. Now, if you're 88 years old and you're in this church <laughs> and you're celebrating your birthday today, can you please stand? Is there anyone? Uh, there he is. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Eliezer. Eliezer. Happy birthday to you, sir. Happy birthday. Please keep standing. You know, I, in, in, fact, in fact, I think your birth certificate is wrong, right? Uh, you look like maybe 48. <laughs> but we want to just say we appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate your presence. We appreciate your ministry. And we want to wish you happy birthday today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, you know, whenever we do this, you know, um, maybe there's someone else that's celebrating a birthday today. Is there anyone else that's celebrating a birthday today? Is there anyone else? Just want to make sure, right? Just want to make sure. Is anyone celebrating a birthday this week? Is there anyone celebrating a birthday this month? Stand. Stand, 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 stand. Now, now you know I don't sing, right? <laughs> now, you shouldn't be laughing now. You're in God's church. But we want to sing happy birthday to all these individuals. Let us sing happy birthday to these individuals. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 All right. Now I'd like to know, is there anyone perhaps visiting Abundant Life uh, for the first time? You're a visitor. You came into town and you just want to say, praise God, I'm alive and well and I'm in the sanctuary of God. If that's the case, I would like you to stand with me. Visitors, visiting friends, anyone visiting? Uh, amen. Amen. Visitors. All right. Now, members, members, the closest member beside these individuals, I want you to stand. A member, I see Brother Henderson. All right. Okay, Sister Cooper. All right, you got, I'd like you to turn around, get the names, and I want you, we're going to introduce the names of these individuals. All right. And so we have all right, we're going to start from the front here, and I assume that this is a family. And where are you visiting from? From California. California, amen. Now, what are your names? My name is Ambria, and I'm visiting um, from um, Capital City Seventh Day Adventist Church in Sacramento. No, this is my best friend, and my niece, and my brother. All right. So I brought them with my name is Regina from Stockton, California, visiting from Valley Community Seventh-day Adventist Church. Praise the Lord. I'm Eliana Austin, and I live here. I'm Eliana Austin, and I live here. All right, Eliana, nice to have you. My name is Ebian, and I live here. Amen, amen. Right. Cheryl McLeod from Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes. Racine McLeod, I live here. Amen. Nicole Magnus Burke, I'm from Jamaica, Kennecott SDA. Did I speak to you yesterday? So you are the one. Amen. My fellow Jamaican, praise the Lord. We are so happy to have you all here. Praise God. We want this to be your church. Those of you in town, whatever church that you have been going to, this is going to be your church from now on. I'm prophesying that. No. <laughs> no, we're just so happy to have you here. Praise the Lord. Now, we have another. Thank you very much. 
We have uh, Leo and Gwen Clark from Las Vegas. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for all our visitors. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome. This is a church I came here about a one year ago, and I recognize that this church has a lot of love. I, I don't see a lot of frowns. People there just love each other in this church. And so we are so happy to have each and every one of you here in the church. Now, there's a lady that she testified that she has been calling uh, for about uh, three times this week. And she called, but she did not get through. And she's sitting right at the back there. And for some reason, you did not stand, right? But I want to point you out because we love you, right? Now, can you tell us your name again? I know it is a sister. Sister McCullough. Amen. We. Amen. Praise the Lord. We welcome you, Sister McCullough. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, everyone, this is what it's all about. We come from the north, the west, the south, and the east, but we come for one thing, to worship God. Amen? Amen. And we come to worship him in spirit and in truth. We welcome you. We want to invite everyone to stand as we sing our opening song. Good morning again. Our opening hymn is actually going to be 118, the first Noel. Let's make sure everybody has it because I know some of us aren't used to using the hymn books, but we do have them. 118 in our hymnals.
Please be seated. At this time, this is a time in this church service where we focus on the children. The Lord says, suffer the little children to come unto me, forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And so we want to invite the children to come on up and we will be preparing a little word for the children. And so little ones, come on up. Good, good, good. All right. Take a seat. Take a seat. All right. All right. Now, children, I want to ask you a few questions. How many of you are afraid of snakes? Audience, how many of you are afraid of snakes? You're right. Now, I know what would happen, right, if, if a snake snuck into church, right, and started slithering around in church. You know what would happen, right? We'll have an empty church in seconds, right? <laughs> I, I was telling the story uh, this week uh, to the assembly of uh, a church back in, uh, I think it was in Tennessee, uh, they took literally that text in Mark chapter 16 that tells that, you know, the uh, snakes, poisonous snakes will bite them and they will survive. And uh, so the pastor of the church imported some snakes and brought some snakes to church. I want you to know something. Uh, I would never attend that church <laughs> because I'm afraid of snakes, right? The Bible tells us uh, in the book of Genesis that snake, right, the snake was more cunning and more crafty than any creature of the field, right? Snakes are very tricky uh, creatures, right? They get into corners and crevices and they hide and even some of them, they camouflage themselves. That means they match into the environment so that they could uh, trick you and bite you or fall on you in, in very, very weird places. Now, a friend of mine told me this story, a snake story, and it had a moral to it. And I thought I will tell you today. Uh, 
Now, this friend of mine, he was from Kenya. And he was telling me one day, uh, this father and son was walking. And while they were walking, the father stopped and says, son, son, I want you to stop playing immediately over there and just get on your knees and crawl to me as quickly as possible. And the son, what do you think he did? He, do you think he kept playing? Okay, you say he kept playing. Some say, how many of you think he listened? How many of you think that he kept playing? All right? You know, when your parents tell you to come right away, right? Your parents are able to see certain things that maybe you cannot see, right? And so this, this Kenyan father, he was seeing something that his son was not able to see. And luckily, his son immediately got down on his knees and crawled over to his father. And immediately when the father, uh, when he crawled over, the father says, son, I want you to look now and I want you to look up. And when they looked up, there was a snake that was hanging from two limbs in the tree. And the snake was hanging and he was just being, he was just preparing to fall. You know, some of these snakes, right, what they do, they fall down, and while they're falling, they start preparing themselves to coil, right? And they wrap, they wrap their victim up and wrap it up just like a rope, and they swallow their victim. And this was what was about to happen, and the father saw the danger, and calmly and sternly he says, son... I want you to get down on your knees and crawl over to me right away. And immediately when the son and the father looked up and saw the danger, the son was very happy that he obeyed. Now children, it is very important to obey your parents. Obedience is key to survival in this world. Amen? And so this little boy could have lost his life if he did not obey. There's sometimes your parents, they tell you something and you think that three or four foot you, you're smarter than your parents and your grandparents and you want to do what you want to do, right? And you end up getting hurt in the process. But I want to thank God that this little boy was obedient and as a result of his obedience he was able to save his life because he was obedient to his father now how many of you guys are going to promise that you're going to be obedient to your parents and your guardians i see some of you guys are saying kind of right <laughs> let's hope a snake don't come and visit your home <laughs> all right all right, who's going to pray for us? All right, I see you here. You're, you're closer. All right. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. I hope we can go home safely and that everybody can go to school. Just say amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for the prayer. Amen. Praise God. Go silently back to your seat. Blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Psalm 65, 22 says, Cast your burdens upon the Lord. He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. It's prayer time now, so if you have any burdens or you just want to come down to the altar, you can come down at this time.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord, in which to praise your name. Lord, we thank you for all the things you've done for us this week, Lord. We thank you for all your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for your guidance. Lord, we thank you for our jobs, Lord. We thank you for keeping us safe, Lord, on these streets and freeways, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for everything you're doing in our lives, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive us for our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And continue to guide us, Lord, in your marvelous life. Heavenly Father, we'd like to ask you to bless our church ministries. We ask that you bless our church school and the children that attend, Lord. We ask that you continue to help them to grow in the knowledge of you. We'd like to ask you to bless our church leaders. The sick and shed in on our bulletin, Lord. We ask a special blessing on Sister Kim Foster that's been in the hospital. And Sister Cisco. Lord, we ask that you just continue to give us guidance, Lord. Sister, Sister Gloria, as well. Lord, we ask that you bless the presenter of the message this morning. And just continue to be with us throughout this Sabbath day. And we'd like to close this prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning once again, everybody. It's time for praise and worship. So we prayed and we've asked God's presence in this place, and now we're going to praise him a little bit more. The first song we're going to sing this morning is, I'm glad I've got that old time religion. Now, when we come to your day of the week where you got blessed, you better stand and let us know. We're waiting for our words. Here we go. I'm glad. I'm glad I got that old time religion. I'm glad I got that old time religion. I'm glad I got that old time religion. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. On Sunday. On Sunday. 
that old time religion on Sunday I got that old time religion on Sunday I got that old time religion I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad on Monday on Monday I got that old time religion on Monday I got that old time religion on Monday I got that old time religion I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad how many you got it on Tuesday on Tuesday I got that old time religion on Tuesday I got that old time religion on Tuesday I got that old time religion I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad on Wednesday I got that old Got everybody, everybody got excited on that song. <laughs> People were like, yeah, Sabbath, let's do it again. <laughs> our next song is talking about how awesome our God is. Our God is awesome. Um, as many of you already know, my grandmother passed away last week. 97 years, though. 97 years of life. And we know we have this blessed hope. She was a woman of God, so we know we're going to see her good again. So this song is my testimony about how awesome our God is. Oh. 
He's mighty, he's mighty. He's mighty, he's mighty. He's mighty, awesome. Awesome, he's holy. He's holy, he's holy. He's holy, he's holy. Protector, 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 awesome, awesome, my God is awesome, he can move mountains, keep me in the stand for our opening song, Oh Come Let Us Adore Him.
to you this morning. God is good. God is good. And I know the response is supposed to be in all the time. But I'm going to say God is good. As I look back over my life and I look at this church and I look at the men that have gone through this church and I see the blessings how good God has been to us. How can we not praise a God like our God? And as I stand here before you right now, how can anybody rob God? He told me in the book of John that I'm going to prepare a place for Eyes haven't seen, our ears haven't heard, it even haven't entered into the heart of man, the place that God went to go prepare for us. And how can we rob him? Well, at Malachi, he tells us this here. Malachi chapter 3, and I'm going to start at verse Verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? And tithes and offering. Wait a minute now. Verse 9 says something else. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. But God tells us in verse 10, he said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here with saith the Lord of hosts. And this is one of my favorite promises I love about God. If I would not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. But I love verse 12 in this here. He said, and all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. At this time, will the deacons and the deaconess come? So we can receive this morning tithes and offerings. As I lift up a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you. As you heard us say, how can we serve a God like you that's been so good to us? And now in this time in earth history, you allowed us to come one more time in the place of worship where we can worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, you allowed us to return back what you have given us to you. We ask you now, Father, to bless the offering, bless the tithes, bless the offering that we're about to return back to you that it will finish out this ministry here on this land.